he mentioned baptism so under being born again is devotion that uh, sorry submission baptism then we talk about devotion which means commitment to walk and grow in the knowledge of god we said that to last week then i also said the third thing that unifies us together is the teaching on holiness anywhere they are teaching you that ah you don't need to walk in holiness so jesus has paid the price for the sin of yesterday for the sin of today and the one you are going to commit tomorrow we don't serve the same god please don't believe that kind of gospel then we also talked about that the bible is god's standard any church where you see that the bible is the standard that shows you that we serve the same god the bible is the standard and the last one we said number five that uh, any church where they believe in rapture that everything does not end here we are still going to be raptured it shows that we are serving the same god am i communicating then today we are going to be looking at i want to summarize that aspect so that by next week under this teaching we we'll begin to look at how the bible expects us as christians to get married how the bible expects us as christians to relate with in-laws how the bible expects us as christians to raise children how the bible expects us now there, are, there will be so many teachings on that next week uh when i say but today we are going to be looking at what we'll be looking at we'll be looking at the issue of doctrines in church when we are, we'll be looking at the issue of doctrines in church now so that we will understand and you know the main focus is this though there are different kind of churches we have churches with different names we have several doctrines but doctrines should not be allowed to divide us am i communicating ah god or jackie uh me doctrine yoba doctrine koyawa what do you call it i shall call it doctrine <laughs> praise the lord i don't know why god will help you just interpret it in your mind you know you know for instance in deeper life church they don't believe in using jewelries they don't believe in uh uh you know doing some makeups now you believe in it we should not allow doctrine to set to to divide us the body of jesus is one now that's our focus we are still going to use that same scripture luke chapter 9 let's all go there from verse 45 to verse 48 to 50 luke chapter 9 48 to 50 luke chapter 9 48 to 50 please open your mind and learn so that you will not limit yourself some of you don't have friends in other churches it's wrong so I don't want you to live, I don't want you to be deceived in under the name of a, a denomination. They are CAC. We are God's power. We can't read. No, 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 no. Let's read together again after the count of three. One, two, and let's go. And said to them, Whoever receives this little child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you all will be great say amen to that now john answered and said let's read together we're reading together let's go now john answered and said master we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we forbade him because he does not follow us please take note of this i said it last week then the last verse but let's go one two let's go but Jesus said to him, Do not forbid him, for he for who is sorry, for he who is not against us is on our side. Now I told you last week, the disciple came to Jesus and said, When you sent us out, we saw somebody. Who, we have not seen him in our church before. But we saw him casting out devils in your name, which means we share the same name. Hello? We believe in the same name. We even saw him working miracles with that name, your name, sir. But we discovered that he's not a member of our church. He's, he doesn't come to church here. And we tried to fight him to stop him. And Jesus, our Lord, said, you shouldn't have stopped him. And Jesus said to them, see, who, whoever is not against us is definitely with us. So today, you know I will be teaching on doctrine. So that even you yourself will not be feeling inferior i will show you what doctrine is you know so at times uh, you may want to 
uh, 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 can I put it that way? There are some churches that when they look at some of you, some of us, they judge us and make us feel that they are more holy than us. I don't know whether it has happened to you before. It has happened to me severally. I've been in meetings where some pastors will be saying, uh, uh, I think we had one wedding at uh, one church. I won't mention we are online. So our choir, it was one of our sisters in choir that was getting married to uh, our husband and the mother is a member of a church where they don't believe in jewelries at all. So as we got to the entrance of the church, I noticed that all our choir, our choir people started removing their jewelries, removing their chains, removing... And I look at them, I said, are you hypocrites? Ah! Are you hypocrites? Put it on and let's go in. So when we got in, as the pastor was preaching, evangelist, he said, yes, sir! You know what they said? One of the pastors said, who is that? They said, ah, I won't need your ooh. That is the, people, <laughs> the church of those people that used to make ooh noise when message is on. Now, the pastor preached, preached powerful message, but criticized some of, our, of, of us. But do you now know that after the service, I had time with the pastor's, the pastor's wife and the pastor were talking. You know what I now discovered? The pastor was crediting me for having the courage. I said, why? He said, the pastor now said, there are some things he has taught his members that he cannot change it. That the way they received the gospel those days was why he taught it. He said, but now he has gotten to a point where he, he cannot change it. So he had to beg me to beg our sister that was getting married that she should please not make up. She should please not use jewelry. She should even please not do her hair. That please, pastor. I now ask him, sir, is he wrong? He said, no, sir. Uh, he said, because of the teachings I have taught my members, if I now bring, allow her to come in like that, they will say, I have backslidden. So let's start by saying, what is doctrine? Let's answer that question. What is doctrine? Let's look at these things one after the other. Hallelujah. What is doctrine? Listen, it is the expression, hello, what's that? Doctrine is the expression of what you believe as true. Doctrine is the expression of what you believe as true. Doctrine. Doctrine is the expression of what you believe is true. We can also say doctrine is the principle you uphold. That's why if you look at the Islamists, look at why uh, this, this, uh, the jihadists, they, they, they taught them that if you kill a Christian, they taught them, I read it in one of their documentaries, if you kill a Christian, you are making sacrifice to God. That's what they taught them. That's why you see that whenever there is fight in the north, they are happy. One of my pastor friends, Reverend Titus Okele, said he was at the middle of that thing. He didn't know that his escort, him and his wife and, and their baby, they escorted a friend to the garage. As they were coming, they didn't know that they started riot, religious crisis. This I, I, I was happy we met them on the road. He said they took his six-month-old baby and smashed on the floor. And the baby's brain sp split on the floor. The baby died like that. He said, and they were dancing. Keferini, Keferini. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's a doctrine. They were taught to believe. So when somebody is talking about, oh, the deeper life doctrine, it is what they taught them to be true. It does not mean that what they are practicing is true. Hello? What they were taught to be true. So if you say doctrine, doctrine is the principle you uphold doctrine is the ideology you have that's your that's your ideology doctrine is the what you believe as true doctrine is what you believe as true now if they ask us in our church they'll say ah people say it around here in that church oh, they don't even stop females from wearing trousers some say they have a doctrine they don't stop them from wearing trousers. Did we come here to preach for you to wear trousers as females? No. 
But as you are, the encounter, I will, I will explain more as we go on. Now let's go on. Let's go on. Hallelujah. Talk to me. Hallelujah. Now look at these examples from the ministry of Jesus our Lord. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. I want to show you something. When he was physically present on earth, Matthew 22, 33. We are going to take the first one. Matthew 22 and verse 33. Look at this. The same day, the 22, 33. Yeah. And when the multitude had this, they were astonished. Show us the old King James Version. It used the word doctrine. I want to also pick it from the years. And when the multitude heard this, they were what? They were astonished at his doctrine. Now, what was his doctrine that surprised them? Ever before Jesus came, if you read from the early verse, let's read it from verse, uh, let's take it from verse 23. 23 to 30. Let's just take 23 to 30. Then we now jump back to verse 33. From verse 23. Now look at this. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which said, we say that there is no resurrection and ask him. They said, Master, we know that there is no resurrection, there is no life after death. That's the belief of the Sadducees. Say, Master, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Yes? Now, there was, uh, sorry, now there were with us seven brethren and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the second also and the third unto the seventh. Now, they were going somewhere they were going somewhere. Last of all the women, or last of all, the woman died also. Yes. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. Who will now be her husband when they get to heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken. Not knowing the scriptures, not the power of God. You don't know scriptures or power of God. Verse 30. Show me verse 30 before we now go back to 33. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. So in verse 33, the Bible now look, we will now look at him and say, ah, 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 we are surprised though. At his what? At his doctrine. Which means that they saw the they listened to the teaching of Jesus, and from his teachings, they discovered his beliefs. Am I communicating? So your doctrine is whatever you believe as true. That this is what I believe as true. Do you know that there are some people, if they don't kneel down, they don't believe that they are praying. You see, you want to talk to God, you have to kneel down first. They have, a, they have it as a doctrine to be kneeling down. So whatsoever you believe as true is your doctrine. Look at the next one. Mark chapter 1, 22 to 27. They saw another doctrine of Jesus. Mark chapter 1, 22 to 27. I'm waiting. Mark chapter 1 from verse 22. Now look at this. And they were astonished. Old King James, the same scripture is what we are using. I want the, that word, doctrine. And, sorry. And they were astonished at his word, at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority. Can you see? If you read through, you will see that before Jesus came, nobody was healing. So when they now say, ah, ah, I think Lord Church, I want a temple, I want Pharisee, we go to Tabernacle, we only do all the signs. But look at this man, oh, in his own meetings, he will lay hand, miracles are happening. So the Bible says they were shocked that this man's own style is different. Hello? Now, I'm using this to show you what doctrine is. Doctrine is what you show as your belief. When Jesus was ministering and healing, they saw it as a style. So they now concluded that Jesus has a doctrine of what? Healing. Something also happened in Acts of Apostles chapter 2. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Then we are going to read 44 to 47. Look at Acts 2, 42. The same old King James. Now look at this. And they continued steadfastly in what? 
in the apostles' doctrine. Now, what was the doctrine of the apostles, the style of the apostles, and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers? Now, go to verse 44 to verse 47. 44 to 47. Let's look at the apostles' doctrine. 44. And all that believe we are one. We are what? Together. Unity was the first sign. All that believe were together and had things in common. They were united. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Number two, they were generous towards one another. Apostles' doctrine. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple. They were meeting in one place, breaking bread from house to house. They were having communion. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. They were united. Apostles' doctrine. Praising God. There was praises in the church and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to them. Can you see? It shows you that your doctrine, I'm only trying to establish what doctrine is, is the expression of what you believe. So you don't need to say, I don't believe in this thing. No. People will just look at your life. When they look at your life, they understand your style. Hello? So, so many things you see in so many churches that are doctrines does not mean, listen, a doctrine does not mean that this is the will of God. No, no. It is truth that you have come to uphold. So, people will now look at your life and say, ah, if you ask so many people in deeper life today, nobody to to told them to cover their head. They saw it as a lifestyle. Oh, God this church I'm going, this is how they dress. They started dressing that way. Hello? Now, before some of you joined the church, some of you came from churches where you don't even, females don't wear trousers to church. We didn't preach to you that, hey, sister, you can wear trousers. You can wear skirt too, Abby. But you just saw it as, are you sure you are here with me? Let me read something I wrote here. Hallelujah. The people only noticed it. And they mentioned what they discovered and followed it. So there's a probability that all the church doctrines people follow today were never mentioned. People only followed by observation. Look at Pastor. Uh, okay, I'll get there. I'll get there. Let's go to the next question. Where, sorry, what are the source of doctrine? Follow me. I'm en enlightening your mind. What are the sources of doctrine? What are the sources of doctrine? I put them in alphabetical order. A, it could come from encounters. Uliwa nekwa ibakwa de, it could come from encounters. It could come from an encounter or encounters. Some things that you just decided, this is going to be my style of worshipping God. It could come from encounters. God met you and had a discussion with you or an experience with you one-on-one. -on -one. Concentrate. How do I know that doctrines could come by encounter? Acts of Apostles chapter 10 from verse 9. Before Acts chapter 10 verse 9, put it on screen, we'll read it too. Peter was a follower of Jesus Christ, but he didn't believe that the gospel could get to, to the Gentiles. Have he? He didn't believe. He saw Gentiles as unbelievers. In those days, if a Jew should touch a Gentile, he would go and wash his hand because Gentiles will make them unclean. But look at the encounter Peter had. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew near unto the city, Peter went up upon the house top to pray about the sixth hour. He went to pray about the sixth hour. And while he was praying, you will see the encounter he had. Next verse, please, I'm waiting. He had an encounter while he was praying. Now, while he was praying, the Bible says he saw and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. He saw a, a, a vision and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet night 
at the four corners and he let down the earth yes wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air yes and there came a voice to him rise peter kill and eat kill and eat kill and eat move on move on move on we don't have all the time but peter said not so lord for i have never eaten anything that is what that is common or unclean i have never eaten anything that is common or unclean and the voice spake unto him again the second time what god had cleansed that that call not thou common don't call what god has clean unclean this was done thrice and the vessel was received up again into heaven so now while peter doubted in his in himself what the vision which he had seen should mean behold the men which were sent from colinius colinius was a gentile had made entry for simon's house and stood before the gate as they stood before the gates, move on, move on, move on, move on, move on, and called and asked whether Peter, which was son named uh, Simon, which was called Simon Peter, was lodged there. Now, move on. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Three men are waiting for you outside. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Who are they? Gentiles. Do you know that there's no time I would have read when Peter got to their house he saw that these are unbelievers he didn't want to preach to them he still had the belief that ah salvation is only for the jews the bible says while he was now talking to them the experience that they had with jesus christ the holy ghost just came on them bah! and they started speaking in tongues gada, gada. Eh? peter said if god had given you the same gift that he has given us there's nothing that should stop me from baptizing you that's in this Acts chapter 10. Do you now know that after he baptized the house of Colinius, in Acts chapter 11, they summoned Peter, all the other disciples, apostles, summoned Peter to a meeting. We heard that you went to the house of a Gentile. We are going to summon you. You are unclean. You are unclean. Then Peter now started to tell them the vision he saw. I saw a vision. And after I saw the vision, this man came. And the Spirit of God said, I should follow them. And as I got to the, the man's house, I didn't want to preach to them. The Holy Ghost just came upon them. Do you know that that was what changed the my, mentality of the entire disciples? They didn't want to re re relate with Gentiles. So, listen. God could give, bring doctrine by encounter. By what? Encounter. In the church where I was raised, they, they don't use jewelries. They don't use earrings. The uh, chain, our our females, they have a measurement where their gowns should get to. But when I came out, that one is a story that <laughs> because the devil attacked my pastor, he ran mad, the church scattered. When I came out, I now sat down and went on a personal Bible study research. Now, it was there I had an encounter with God that God started to teach me that, son, there are certain things that no man should tell man. Hello? I know of people that don't wear earrings, not because earrings is the same, because they have an encounter with God over it. I know of certain people, if you see them, if you see the, those ladies wearing trousers, you'll be thinking that they don't know God. Bishop Elijah of Blessed Memory said he went to pray, he went to a Bible school in England many years ago. And the lady sitting next to him make the makeup was so much. He said, and he was saying, he said, This girl is a devil. And funny enough, every single time they finish, you know how the white people used to do, they'll say, Can you hug your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I love you with the love of Jesus in the Bible school? So anytime he wants to walk, he'll be hugging the devil this is the devil he said then there was this particular boil big boil that came on his nose the boil was troubling him he said so in this bible school class god wanted to teach him a lesson the lady looked at him and said you are from nigeria the evangelist from nigeria aren't you feeling pain with this boil issue he said yes i'm feeling serious pain 
I've done everything. The boy did not go. He said, the lady now said, can I pray for you? Ah, ah. He said, look at, I'm talking. He said he was saying his heart. I'm saying you are a devil. He said he now made up his mind. I will, okay, pray for me. To shame her. He said, and the lady laid hands and the nose and said, Father, this is a burden on your servant's nose. I speak to this boy. In the name of Jesus, leave his nose. By this time tomorrow, let it no longer be there. Bishop said, they closed for class. They closed class that day. He went back home. He slept. He woke up in the morning. The boiler disappeared. He said the second day as he was coming, he was running. The, 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 the minister of God in England. Ah, Lady Miracle, Lady Miracle. He said the order. He said that was where God taught him never to despise anyone. That God does not relate with people based on what you wear or don't wear. Encounters. In case you didn't know, Redeemed Christian Church of God was a classical church from the beginning. They don't use jewelry. They don't use ear, anything. If you come to Redeem and you don't cover your hair as a lady, they won't allow you in. It was Pastor Deboy that had the encounter. He said he was praying and he got a vision. He saw people of different types rushing into redeem he said he was now trying to drive them go back go back he said and in that dream he had the voice said to him enoch my son whose church is this he said redeem, redeem christian church of god sir he said the voice now is he redeemed christian church of adeboye he said no sir let my people come to worship him as worship me as they are he said that was what gave back to model parish because whenever he now said okay allow them to come some people in redeem that know god more than him that believe they know god more than him we still go and stand at the entrance and be telling you you cannot enter here am i communicating so doctrines comes by at times you can get doctrine by encounter say here so I've shared the, uh, the encounter of Peter with the Gentiles. Now, I wrote here, but this encounter is an encounter when God, when we talk about encounter, when God opens your eyes to notice or see something that others are not seeing. That's what we call an encounter. God opening your eyes to see something that others are not seeing. Now, at such times, eh, when you now begin to establish some doctrines. See, you won't be moved. People will not be able to talk you into it. Ah, when I got married to my wife, she was an SU now. But we sat down together. We shared scriptures together. And I told her what I want. And I showed her reason why. She saw it too. And she came up. So, doctrines could come by encounter. Number two, or B, sorry, B. Doctrines can be formed from baseless personal beliefs. Doctrines can be formed from baseless personal belief. Some people believe that there are certain... There is a you know some people just believe if you ask them why 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 they, they can't explain they can't explain it could be baseless but some people just believe you need to see where these Muslims these Muslims fight Christians and they see it as they are fighting for God why do you believe in what you believe some people don't even explain you can't explain. It could be baseless. And when it is baseless, if you enter into an argument with such people, you hands them down. A family member came to see me many years ago. He said, Pastor Prince, Pastor Prince, Pastor Prince, I said, what is that? He said, somebody came from the dead. And the person said, he was counting people that are going to hellfire and the things that they will be doing. That ha, people that do this, they are hellfire. They do this, hellfire. They come, hellfire. I said, auntie, even Paul the apostle said, if anyone come from the dead to preach a different gospel 
I said, you know why Paul said that? He says, because it's a sign that some people will come back from the dead with the gospel, with a different gospel. That we are talking about the devil, full of deception. I said, all these things, they are counting for you. Where is it in the Bible? You know what the auntie said? He said, don't tell them in church. Pastor, if you teach them like this, they will be free. I said, should I now bound them? You know, some people like it like that. That's why you as a Christian, if you are going to believe in anything, let it as base. And where should the base come from? It should be from the word of God. So doc doctrines could come from baseless beliefs. Hmm. I remember those days. If my Bible fall down, maybe I hold my Bible and it fall down. Ah, Lord, forgive me. Oh, Lord, die to me. Lord, forgive me. Ah, Lord. <laughs> I of Jesus, a word of God for that. This is not the word of God. Eh? This one is only letter. The word of God is a spirit inside this one. It becomes the word of God when you understand it, walk in it, and act upon it. it that's the word of God in your life and your mouth. I haven't seen people that believe that when they are sick, just put the Bible on their chest. If I know of people that will tell you that uh, uh, if, if I die, do Bible coughing. Baseless beliefs. Hallelujah. Talk to me. Hallelujah. You can do better. You know, there, there are people that believe that they can't give an offering that is not mint. I know of people like that. If they want to give offering, they will go and look for mint. If it's not mint, they won't give. See, we are giving it to God, but it must be neat. Now, see, let's look at see. Doctrines can be formed unconsciously, even without beliefs. Doctrines can be formed unconsciously. People just follow what they see others do without finding out whether it is right or wrong. Doctrines can be formed unconsciously. I remember Pastor Matthew Shimalo taught many years ago that. Uh, in the story of a woman the woman took a, a, a hook she went fishing and when she gets to the, uh, to the when she got to the side of the sea once the hook catch any fish she will bring the fish she will bring a, a ruler she will measure it if the fish is longer than the ruler she will throw it back to the sea she will try again she will measure it. If it's longer than the ruler, she will throw it back to the sea. Ah. They now ask her, why? You know what she said? He said, because that ruler is the size of my fry pan. Ah. Then why do you have that size of fry pan? He said, that is the type of fry pan I, uh, my, my mom used all her life. And I, I grew up in, I, with her, you know, till she died. It was that size of fry pan. And my mom told me it was the size of the fry pan too that her mom used. Can you see that it has become a belief of small size fry pan? Some people just follow what others are doing. That's why I say, Gospel, look up. Gospel members, look up. I want you to be solid Christians. Christians that understand the reason for what you do. Look at when, when uh, Daddy Freeze came up and spoke against tithing. A lot of people stopped paying tithe in churches all over the world. It didn't affect our church. You know why it will not affect? Because you are taught. When somebody asks me, Pastor Prince, why do you pay tithe? I say, I'm not paying tithe because of Malachi chapter 3. Bring you all the tithes to the soil that they may be put in my house. Uh, the the, 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 the volar. No, I am paying tithes because I saw that Abraham, the father of faith, was a tither. And I also saw that his grandson, uh, 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 Jacob, when he was going, said, Lord, if you bless me at my return, I will pay tithe. And do you know that up till now, even in the Pentecostal setting, 
in the book of Romans, they still refer to Abraham as the father of faith. Which means, I want to do what Abraham is doing. Hello? So some people don't just, don't, they just follow. There is no reason for what they are doing. So when they face challenge, those are the people that backslide easily. D. Doctrines could also come from demonic or ignorant minds in order to put them, so in order to put people under bondage. Doctrines can also come from demonic or ignorant minds in order to put people under bondage. And you know why the devil puts people under bondage? To deprive them of the good things that God freely made available to them. I remember those days that Deeper Life members, all of them were bringing out their TV sets in the 80s. They call it the box of Satan. They were setting it on fire. Some of you were not born that time. Those days, it was a demonic uh, orchestrated doctrine. And I remember those days, ah, great servants of God of blessed memory now, Kenneth uh, Casey Price. He's an American preacher. He came up, he said, no, 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 no. The TV ain't the box of the devil. It ain't the box of the devil. The TV has a, it, it has a switch. If, it, if they are doing something that you don't like on it, what do you do? You turn it off. You turn it off. The TV is, it, it ain't the box of the devil. The TV is a vessel that God can use. Do you know that today, Pastor Kumi cannot reach everywhere without TV? Every Monday now, go to Deeper Life worldwide. They sit down in front of TV. Worldwide. Anytime we are going home and we are going late, there's a corner we used to pass through to our house. You will see very big church, Deeper Life Church. There may not be more than four or five. They are watching TV. Why? Because the devil, the devil saw the future of the church. It was attacking it with wrong doctrine. So doctrine later the issue are in order to put you in bondage and deprive you of what God has in mind. Let's go quickly. We have another question. How should we relate together as, be as believers when our doctrines are different? Hmm. That's the last question I'll be answering now. How should we relate together as believers when our doctrines are different? How? Because if I, if I tell you the truth, the issue of doctrine have divided the church. A pastor of a deeper life cannot join and with pastor of four square. Pastor of four square cannot join and with pastor of God's power. Pastor in God's power cannot join and with a pastor of uh, CAC. Now you now have five Christians living in a whole building. They cannot together, you know, they cannot come together to pray. The CAC man will say the, the Pentecostal man does not understand prayer. That if he don't shake, you are not praying. The Pentecostal man will say, must I have to shake? Should I have to shake my should I have to shake my head? Now, listen, as we have in the Bible, shout unto the Lord. We also have in the Bible whisper. Nobody had the voice of Anna, but God answered that prayer. Have you? But everybody had the voice of that blood by Bartimaeus. He also got his miracle. Jesus, Anna, David. He got miracle. But Anna, yeah. But she got miracle too. So how do we relate? I had A, B, and C answer. A. Every relationship should have a focus. 
every relationship should have a focus i gave some examples here should, now you find out this person i want to relate with is he my neighbor that's one find out is he my neighbor is he my business friend is he my social friend is he my deep friend the first thing you must establish is the focus of your friendship now and once you discover your focus face your focus if that person is your business friend don't let anything concern you with the person's church In our school at Liberty, we have Jehovah Witness. In our school at uh, Elebu, we have Jehovah Witness. If I was, I didn't know that they were Jehovah Witness. They came to check this, the school, and the person was, uh, we're now discussing on phone. The person now said, okay, thank you, sir. I gave them some favor. The person now said, thank you, sir. May Jehovah bless you. Ah, thank you for your good heart, sir. May Jehovah reward you. I now said, please, I'm sorry, ma'am. What church do you attend? He said, we are Jehovah Witnesses. Do you know that we are going to have Christmas party? If we call it Christmas party, they won't come. You know what I call it? Excursion. Oh God. We are going on an excursion party. A minimum of Christmas party. So do I won't come. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how you must relate. Understand the focus of the friendship. Of that relationship. Or else, you will lose. The man that will sign your business contract is from a uh, 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 mountain of fire. You are from a new covenant church. You enter his office and you are asking him, sir, sir, why are you, why are you making noise in prayer? What? It will spoil the contract. You, you better leave him. Know what to you pay your attention on. Am I communicating? So the first thing to do, you must understand the focus of the relationship what kind of relationship do you have he's my neighbor now look at when we were living at uh, adeniji my neighbor was a pastor with cac i'm a pastor at god's Five evangelical mission there are some things i believe in they don't believe in there are some things they believe in i don't believe in we didn't allow that to bother us we are neighbors we related as what well, as neighbors we lived together for about three or four years we never had a fight. We never had a fight. I didn't speak against their doctrine. He didn't speak against our doctrine because we had the understanding of the focus of our friendship. That's how to relate with fellow Christians all over the world. B. Pay attention to the unifying factor. That's what you should be looking at. What brings us together? Jesus brought us together. Abby, that's what you should pay attention to. Don't look at the things that are bringing separation. Pay attention to the things that brings us together. Jesus brought us together. Baptism brought us together. Being born again brought us together. Rapture brought us together. These are unifying factors. Excuse me. If he goes out of the sun, open his eyes to the sun and begin to pray, that should not be your business. As long as you have the same belief, the same Jesus. Ah, the, 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 the first person that supported my radio program was a member of Global Harvest Church. He had the program, he called me on phone. He said, I just had your program. Are you Pastor Prince Will? I said, yes, sir. He said, how much does it cost to run your program? I said, sir, that time, it, it, was, it is 17,000 uh, per, per session, sir, of 15 minutes. He said, I will pay for 13 weeks and I will continue to pay for it. I didn't pursue him to bring him to God's power. Hello? That's where some of you miss it. 
You now look at your friend, Auntie, a joy in room, but look at the common ladder. She couldn't sing in it. Only about rain, eh? To buffet, we lulu, who will lose on, who will allow, who can. Do you understand what I'm saying? Unifying factor, Nick, Kajaka Jomaru. The last one. We are looking at how should you relate together as believers when our doctrines are different. Number C, strengthen your heart with scriptural backup over your own belief. Strengthen your heart with scriptural backups over your own belief. That's why I used to say anything you don't have a scriptural backup for, don't do. You know why you should strengthen your heart? So that even if that person begins to speak against your own belief, you have proof. Am I communicating? There was a time I had the privilege, I, I, the, uh, I, have a, I had a friend like that, and he raised up an issue. I said, let's go to the Bible. I told him, I said, let's go to the Bible. So I started to came from Bible verse to Bible verse. From Bible verse to Bible verse. From Bible verse to Bible verse. And I told him, I said, I'm not taking you through to nullify your own believer. You ask me why I believe in what I'm doing. And this is the scriptures to back up. We are familiar. If you don't know scriptures, see, they'll be making you to... In fact, they might make you a born again to look like an unbeliever. Hey, Pastor, why do you believe in the preaching of prosperity? And I come to make the first thing I always make them understand. You think prosperity, when you hear prosperity, the first thing you think of is money. It's not money. Prosperity is not money. Prosperity is being well in every aspect. Spirit, soul, and body. And what does the Bible say? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and what? And being held and thy soul prosper. Spirit, soul, and body. But the problem is that so many of you Christians, you, are, you don't have scriptural backup. What you hold as doctrine is, is, base, is found from baseless beliefs. Just like one day I went to pick my children in the school and we're looking for Sister Oye. That Long ago, we're looking for Sister Oye, looking for her. Look, ah, there's somebody said I should go and look for her in the church. At Victory Church. Then when we went to Victory Church, I saw her and some people praying and I was looking at my daughter. Ah, in the name of God, fire, fire. They were doing deliverance for their mates. <laughs> I just come. He said, Daddy, we are not a trust. Come down. Who, who, who sent you to be the come deliverance minister? So I had to put her through some things. Like, case of next time, like this, like this, like this. If you see how she was praying, Father, ah! Have you been Mommy Gio? <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yes, now we're about to take the flesh. 